On the one hand, you've got this tight, tight little bodice, which shows off the dancer's torso. And then you've got this kind of plate of frothy net that sticks out from the hips. There's no other garment like it in history. When you're in a group of ballet dancers all in wearing tutus, there's like a, you can only get so close. You can't actually be, as most ballets, you can be, you know, side to side. But actually, you've got this kind of barrier, you know, my dance space and your dance space, as it were. And you can't get any closer. So you end up getting this quite this level. So it's like lily pads all along the pond. This is the Merleton costume from Nutcracker. This, this would take a very long time. This one, this is definitely a three-weeker. Backstage at the Opera House, there's an absolute froth of fabulous, fabulous tutus as they gear up for their Nutcracker season. I think this is the, a whole raft of flower fairy tutus and some uh, tutus here for the dance of the Merleton. At the moment, I think we have 87 tutus for Nutcracker. Sleeping Beauty is the largest one with more. Um, probably 150. You have this kind of barrier between you and her, so you're, instead of partnering you know, very close where you can feel exactly where her weight is, you have to step back to not kind of bash it up because it doesn't look good. So you have to learn to partner kind of at the end of your arm's length. But also the biggest problem I find is that you can't actually see her legs because I'm looking down here. I can't tell where her feet are or where um, her balance is going to be. You often get a lot of skirt in your face and it's quite <laughs> scratchy. You can come off with like a red face or things like that. But uh, it's just when they're too, they're, they're huge. Like the Cinderella tutus are really, really big. And it's like there's two people, you're partnering two people really. You can't see her legs at all. Those are the, the bad ones. When I um, danced Swan Lake, I, uh, in a rehearsal once, it was a dress rehearsal I was in, it was the third act, and there's a moment where you finish in a backbend being held by the boy, and I had this very sort of intricate, glamorous tiara on, and it got caught onto the tutu. So that was a bit of an embarrassing moment because I was sort of stuck in this backbend until, he, you know, the boy cottoned on and then wrenched my headdress away from the tutu. Inside, which you don't see, is that is very very important and this the the pants and the basque we normally fit before we put the nets on for any production of a ballet where there may be i don't know 80 or 100 tutus to wear uh, it's becoming a real problem for big theatres like the opera house where finding makers who are capable of sewing a tutu, cutting the material exactly right and layering it, I think has become a bit of a problem for the opera houses of the world. A lot of the makers don't want to make the, the base. They will do the top skirt and the bodice, but they don't want well, to they'll make... They'll do the fun part. Absolutely. So if you're doing a big, <laughs> a big ballet like Sleeping Beauty or Swan Lake, we book them well in advance. Right. Black Swan. I like the Black Swan tutu. It just really gets you into character. The minute you put the black swan costume on, you've got this headdress to match and everything. It's, and a, it's, it's such a contrast from the white swan. It's, um, it's great.